everybody, Texas Stroke here, Lance's Performance Shop, Lone Star, Mopars.com. I have made this video before, back when I first got this in, I was very excited and then I got busy. Uh, it worked out good in a couple of ways. Number one, the EFI kit that I brought in at the time, this was not on the market. If this was on the market at the time, it would have really, really expedited things for me. But it wasn't, and as fate would have it, I didn't get time to install the EFI kit. This surfaced, and it's pretty much a godsend for people like me. This is Holly 12-139. This is a fuel pump designed for EFI. This is a 255 liter per hour. This is six bolt. What that's in relation to is a fuel cell. You've typically, you know, whatever brand your fuel cell is, it's probably got a six or a 12 bolt flange. Uh, I've got one six and one 12, an aluminum 12 in the duster, uh, charger I should say, and a six bolt flange and a plastic cell in the duster. I went ahead and picked this thing up. I think you can modify it either way. Uh, don't hold me to that. But essentially with the EFI kits, everyone comes in. And of course, if you're like me, you're gonna run a pump in line, mounted to the frame rail. It's a little louder, it's not as efficient. Your pump life won't be as long. There's a lot of negatives to it. A lot, a lot of people come in and they get the repop fuel cells, right? And uh, they've got, they're set up. Tank Sink or somebody has them set up for a drop-in fuel pump. Now. If you went my route way back in the day, uh, and you gotta realize a lot of this technology and these parts for Mopars have just surfaced in the very, very recent past. I had fuel cells. Uh, that's the route I decided to go. I liked it better than the fuel tanks. The fuel tanks, the prices have come down a lot, so on and so forth. But if you had a fuel cell, you didn't really have all these options that the people just getting into the game had, right? And it was sort of like, well, you're gonna mount it to the frame rail. This is going to solve that. This is going to give us with the fuel cells the same options as those with brand new tanks have when you switch over to EFI. So uh, this again, 12139 came from Summit 350-ish. I think its list is like 389. I think I got it. I might have actually gotten it a little cheaper than that. I'm not sure because I did. I was probably one of the first people to order the thing. <laughs> but, uh, I'm just going to have it here for a quick second because I say so, so many times you can almost always tell the quality of something based on the packaging. And that is the case here. This thing came double boxed, if I remember correctly. And then this foam, you can tell, was specifically made to house that piece. And that is that piece. But look, look at the... Uh, the foam here uh, that is much appreciated so this is big it's awkward I'm gonna get it out of this box so we can put it down horizontal take a better look at it I will showcase what is included and uh, this should be a much much shorter video to just showcase the product let you know it's out there and to let you know that we will be installing it hopefully very soon all right so here it is this is what was in the box this is the bread and butter of it anyway we got some small parts we will cover shortly I remember when I first made this video I pretty much ripped Holly uh, for three reasons. Number one, fitting one. Number two, fitting number two. And number three, the lack of a fuel pump relay. At $350, and when they have all those parts, Earl's, which are the fittings they recommend for this unit, they own it, they make it. The fuel pump relays, they have it. I don't understand why they don't include it, uh, especially at that price point, because essentially what this is, it's a pretty nice piece, but it's essentially your inline pump. It is slightly different. I do have that one sitting over there in the kit because, again, when I bought my kit uh, for the EFI install, I was going fuel pump uh, mounted to the frame rail because this was not on the market yet. But check it out right here. This is what we will take a look at first. And if I spin that around for you, can you see it? There goes a kit on a scooter outside. It is a Walbro pump. Uh, the numbers on here, GSS 342-23516-1, made in the USA. How about that? <laughs> so, uh, that is going to be the pump that is included. Again, this comes in two versions. I've got the slightly lighter duty version. Uh, obviously, you can step that up, get more flow, support more power. I thought this would suffice for the duster. So, this is in tank. This is designed to be mounted in fuel. It is perfectly safe. It's all the proper sealed connectors should be no issues minus something catastrophic happening you've got this suspect tube i've never been been a fan of those i've always been leery of them but i suppose they actually work i don't know <laughs> we're gonna find out uh the wires the only wires that are on here you basically got power and ground the way this is designed if you note you got some hex head bolts you're gonna want some good hex keys for this that is also i don't believe included I think you'll need two different sizes 
if I remember correctly. But this basically allows you to slide the pump up and down. You can adjust it need be. You can trim things. I'm trying to keep this short and succinct. The important stuff up here, <laughs> this is twofold. Right here, this is your return. And then if I take this cap off, which I have to say, this is billet. It looks awesome. It's a little squeaky. It's a little annoying. If you're like me and you've run fuel cells for years, <clears throat> The biggest downside to it, aside from people wondering what the heck you're doing at gas stations, which is kind of cool, depends on the situation, it's always been the caps, man. There's times those caps just do not come off. I remember I filmed that at length when I did this earlier, and uh, who knows, I may use some of that footage, but they're a pain in the butt. They really are. You know, they work great when you first get them, and then after that, it just it doesn't work. Sometimes you can get it off on the second try, sometimes you're there for like three minutes trying to get your cap off and uh, it's a bad feeling. We're not going to have that problem. This basically looks like a uh, oil filler cap for a valve uh, cover but hey I'm not gonna complain it looks really nice and if black is your jam if that's your color scheme it's even better. So right here though I took that off for a specific reason this is going to be the fuel out right this is going to be what comes from the pump goes to your fuel line goes to your carb your throttle body whatever it may be injectors uh, your particular setup that with the golden tip that is going to be where we're going to send the fuel now right here the return that is going to be where the fuel comes back to us what Holly did that really ticks me off it would be like not including the filler cap right almost I don't understand it. I know they're a little little extra, if you will. But uh, essentially, let me just give you these part numbers if you're curious. That way you can order them ahead of time. Because this is the type of thing a lot of people would order in. And if you didn't look at the instructions ahead of time like I did, you would assume that the fittings were included. And then you would be stuck waiting for parts. Let's say it comes in on like a Thursday or Friday. You're going to put it in on the weekend. Get out to your shop or your garage Saturday. You can't because you're missing fittings. These are the types of fittings that probably don't exist locally. You know, you could probably have them ordered in from O'Reilly's or AutoZone, but they're also not going to be there till next week type of a thing. Uh, if you have like a race shop, especially, you know, an off-road type of a deal, maybe they have them. They're probably going to be more expensive, and it's probably miles and miles away from your home or in a different town. So it just creates a really bad situation. Uh, that said, note... These fuel pump assemblies are not designed to use a standard conical seat style union for fuel out of fuel return. Using this type of fitting will restrict flow and lead to poor performance and potential pump failure. The only, they, they say this, not me, the only correct fitting to use is a contoured port fitting with an O-ring seal such as Earl's part number AT9850 ERL for the fuel out all right, so that's going to be this guy right here, which I'm going to take pictures of this for the uh, write-up on it. But that is going to be for the fuel out. That's the only fitting, the only one you can have. And then for the return, uh, the thing is you're going to have part number AT9850008 ERL4 your fuel return. That's going to be this guy right here, as you can see, hopefully, eventually, maybe. There we go. <laughs> These, they're nothing super fancy, but again, you're not waltzing into Napa and O'Reilly's and AutoZone and Pet Boys and coming out with that, unless you just have an amazing part store that I've never seen. The catch is, that's going to A, derail your install, and two, that first fitting for the fuel out, you're looking at $13.35, that's summit pricing, so if you do have it local, it's probably going to be $15.20, bucks. and then for the fuel return right here, that was priced $10.26 when I brought it in from summit, again, locally, you're probably going to pay $12.15 or more for that, if they have it. Uh, or if they have to order it in type of a deal. So that stuff really ticks me off. And again, we're looking at basically what? 2350 ish right? 23 bucks and change for these fittings. I think they should include that. Even if they want to up the price a little bit, make this thing 359 I don't know. But that should be included in my opinion. That's just chinchy. It's stupid. And it really does piss me off. <laughs> and uh, I'm someone, again, I was so intrigued by this. I was like, man, I got to research this. No one's ever had them. No one's installed them. There's like no knowledge, no data on this stuff. I'm just kind of jumping in. Lucky for me, I read the instructions online ahead of time. And uh, you can see them right there. So it is what it is just a heads up uh, and again 
when I buy something, I like to look at a video, I like to find reviews, I like to see people that have already installed it, and that way I can determine if it's a piece of trash, if it's awesome, uh, if they loved it, but there was something like really, really important that was left out of the directions that made install a headache type of a thing. And uh, this, if you're interested in this, doesn't have to be Mopar, this is across the board. You will have to have those specific fittings. So, what we're going to do now is take a look at the rest of the stuff. And I believe that this is it. So, you basically got your filter sock, uh, which that'll just plug in, go on the bottom of our fuel pump. Uh, that's about all there is to it. I guess that just kind of snaps on type of a thing. Uh, and then this is the return tube. This is kind of one of those things. I mean, this is like, you know, in the 90s, like all the convenience stores had those like refillable mug type of things. This is like the straw they had. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's what it is. This will be our return tube, so presumably it would slide in there, and again, it will get trimmed. The channel lock 911s that I brought in, this is something else I had in mind for those. And then right here, this is kind of your hardware pack, I suppose. Uh, this is going to be our 6-bolt flange. As you can see here, we've got the screws. They're uh, actually hex head, if you will. So again, you want to have the proper tools. Uh, tools needed 3 16 hex wrench, 4 millimeter hex wrench. Why we can't keep things SAE or metric entirely, I don't know. It's, it's getting increasingly more and more like this. 15 years ago, that would have been you needed a 3 16 hex wrench, you know, and a 1 8 hex wrench or something. Now it's just mixed. You know, it's either all metric or it's all mixed, or you get these random fasteners, you know, one hex, one square, one torx. It's why I'm having to bring these tools in. I'm not just bringing them in to bring them in. I'm doing it because all the time I run into situations where I get stuck because I don't have a stupid tool <laughs> to progress with what I'm attempting to do. So, uh, But they do recommend a quarter inch wrench, a 3 16 drill bit, a tape measure, and again the 4 millimeter hex wrench and the 3 16 millimeter hex wrench. Again, those two items, I totally get not giving you the drill bit, although it would sort of makes sense maybe. <laughs> quarter inch wrench, fine, everyone has it, tape measure, everyone's good. But the hex keys, man, that's like giving away with cheap crap you buy from China, even. So, I don't know. These two fittings, I understand increasing the price. I feel they should be included, particularly when they are critical to the performance and function of said pump. It's just a no-brainer to me. Put it in there and make people pay a little bit extra. Uh, but this stuff, I mean, it wouldn't be that hard to include the hex keys. But that's what's in the box. That's what this thing consists of. Uh, again, it's not only going to provide a quieter installation for those of us converting to EFI. Uh, again, that's the big perk of going in tank. If you're like, well, you know, I've got the factory fuel tank or I just replaced it when I restored the car in 2000. You're not going to be set up for it. You're going to have to drop the tank, drill it, put the special flanges and pucks in, all that stuff. They do make tanks now that are set up ready to go for drop-in pumps like this. However, if you went the fuel cell route, if it's a race car, if it's like Pro Street, if it's just you thought the fuel cell was a better option for whatever reason, I've got them in both my cars. I've run them for years, zero issues. We didn't have this as an option, right? It was not designed, there was nothing on the market. I'm sure you probably could rig something up. But, uh, everyone else was just, hey, no big deal. I'll just throw this on the side of the frame rail like I've done for years with my booster pumps or my electric pump that's already there. Uh, which that's what I have done, you know, I've got pumps on the charger and then I was just going to upgrade the pump, get a more powerful one right, rated for EFI. This will allow us to put it in the tank, which one, if you've ever run like a really powerful pump, even for the carbureted stuff, uh, some of them are quite loud. There's others that are not. They've made technological advancements since then that quiet them down. With that comes a price point, which means the majority of people will say, I don't care how quiet a $350 pump is, I can get this one for $150 and just tolerate it. I won't hear it over my exhaust. I won't hear it over the stereo. That's most people's mindset. <laughs> so it's a situation there. Not only will this quieten it down, which I'm fine either way, really, but the biggest benefit to putting this in your tank, aside from it being quieter, it's going to be that the pump is cooler and you should have a longer life cycle. If we're able to drop this thing in and it runs for 8, 12 years, and then that old, loud, fuel-mounted pump, <laughs> fuel uh, frame rail-mounted fuel pump, if that thing was going out every 3 to 4 years, that's an expense. It adds up. This turns out to be much, much cheaper in the long run. Uh, so again, that's sort of my justification. And the big thing, which a lot of people will overlook, quieter, yes. 
Longer life, runs cooler, absolutely. Biggest thing though for me, just from a everyday functionality, I drive these cars a lot type of a thing, eliminating the craptacular filler cap on the fuel cell. Some people, some brands may have something that's fine. This plastic summit cell, nothing wrong with it. It'll open, it'll close, but trying to get that cap off at times is just absolutely absurd. And uh, I hate that. That's the one downside. And this, while it looks cool, uh, and it is a little squeaky right now, maybe over time it'll kind of seat a little bit better, I don't know. But uh, it's going to look good. It's going to give us a much, much more reliable... Every time I come to this, that's going to thread out. I'm good with that. <laughs> so... Once again, this is relatively new. Again, I brought this in in March, sometime around spring break, I think. Uh, Holly, it was one of those things, I was checking their site frequently, and it was like brand new, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> I hadn't gotten the email on it or anything, it was there. Uh, I did a quick search around the internet, I could find no one that had it, no one that had installed it. Again, I recorded these videos back in March, I wish I would have put them up then, because it probably would have helped a lot of people out. But uh, once again, we're going to go ahead and move forward with this thing. Uh, the other thing, keep in mind, you will need a fuel pump relay. Holly's, in my opinion, is ridiculously overpriced. And if I remember correctly in my research, they mandate like 12 gauge wire and then their own fuel pump relay doesn't have that. Uh, I have this one right here from TrickFlow. It's very, very nice. It doesn't use a fuse. It actually uses a breaker. Keep that in mind. Some will like that, some will not. Their part number TFS 2500 4K. 25 30 bucks, I believe, is what I paid for this from Summit. Again, if you go this route, make sure that you factor in, aside from you should be able to get the tools locally if you don't have them, but these two fittings would completely derail your weekend. Especially, like, imagine if you're like, I got to get this out, got to get it to the show, cruise night, the track, I want to see what it'll do. I want to start, you know, driving around on the back road, get my self learning EFI going. You're going to be missing those, you're going to be up a creek, and it's going to suck, and you're going to be mad. So you're going to need these two fittings. You are also going to want a fuel pump relay. I think past that, you should be good. I'll start installing this, see if I run into any other issues. Uh, I'm not quite sure that I will have what I need for the fuel hose side of these, actually, uh, because they look to be fairly large. But that's a bridge that I will cross when I get there. <laughs> so, uh, keep in mind, you might want to research that. I haven't looked at the uh, EFI kit in quite a while. I know there's a crud ton of fittings they gave with that thing. I just have to see if anything mates up with this. So, this is a relatively new part. It's a very, very nice part. Again, it's a Walbro pump. They come in different configurations. Six bolt, 12 bolt flange for your fuel cell. Uh, they've got the little guy here, which looks very, very similar, but is different than the fuel pump that was included as a frame rail mount uh, with my stealth kit. And uh, you can support, I think this one's good for 550-ish. Does it even say here? Yes, 550 or 700 carbureted, uh, 60 PSI, 13.5 uh, volts, 10.4 amp draw. And it's also got a 450 liter per hour fuel pump, which that's going to up things significantly. So uh, that said, I believe we've covered kind of everything we need to know. Billet top flange includes an 8 an inlet port, 10 an outlet, and a fuel filler cap. Fuel pump depth, this is important for some of you if you've got like a custom fuel cell or something. The fuel pump depth is fully adjustable from 7.5 to 12 inches deep. Uh, that, I believe, is about the last pertinent piece of information I need to give you. Uh, so that's, that's what you need to know. If you've got a really shallow cell, you're going to have some problems. As long as you can kind of fit in that range, you should be golden. You could probably modify this if you've got like a really deep cell. I'm not sure what your application would be, maybe like road racing. I mean like cross-country type stuff. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but for, I'd say, 95% of the people, if it's just a street strip car, a drag car, this is going to plug in, it's going to play, it's going to work. Just make sure you have all the requisite specialty fittings, right? So, with that said, I hope this does help you out. My apologies, it's a little long. Uh, but again, I had done this back in March when I first brought this in, and that's there was a lot, a lot of little clips on it, and I didn't know if I felt like editing it. So I went this route, and I hope it does help you out. Uh, once again, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment. Let us know your thoughts on this setup. Let us know if you were aware of it, if you've got it, if you've installed it, uh, if you were putting drop-in pumps in fuel cells years ago, if you use this, what's your experience with it? And uh, we will take it from there. Again, the end goal is ultimately to help people out, let them know A, it's available, B, what to expect, and C, if anyone has any first-hand experience. 
throw that out there save people the headaches you experienced let them know man this is perfect it's awesome you're gonna love it uh, ease their mind with the purchase uh, that's sort of the whole extent of everything we try to do here so lonestarmopars.com is a website make sure you check out the forum you can follow us on twitter like us on facebook circle us on google plus make sure to check us out on instagram as well gonna try to be more active there but uh, that said i'm gonna get some more work done here in the shop on this sunday afternoon and i hope i will catch you back here later